If you've ever been testing sending emails in development, like testing magic link login or different things like that, you've probably dealt with an inbox that looks like this. So this is me just testing my email integration and I'm using NextAuth. So if I go and sign in here, this is actually sending a real email. So it's hitting an SMTP server. That SMTP server is then going to receive the mail and then send it to my actual email account. And then I can head over here to my Gmail and actually get the email. And I bet if you've ever done any sort of testing with email, this is probably the workflow that you have. And of course, we can click the link and now we're logged in. But imagine having to do this over and over and sometimes the SMTP server is slow or sometimes your email client is slow to load. Well, the answer to this is local email testing. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up Mailhog. So Mailhog is essentially a local SMTP server. And once you have it running locally, any emails that are sent to it are just gonna show up in this inbox here. There's no waiting around. Every single email that gets sent to it is just instantly visible right here. So if I update my environment variables to point to this local mail server instead, now whenever I log in, that email will be instantly available over here inside of Mailhog, and then I can just instantly sign in. So this is also great if you're trying to test like email layouts and different stuff like that. You don't have to wait for this hop to the SMTP server and then back to the client. You can instantly log in and start developing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I got all of this set up to get email login with Next.js and Nextoff with a nice local dev experience. So if that sounds good to you, let's dive in. My name is CJ, welcome to Syntax. So for this example, I actually modified the next start repo that I created a few months back. This essentially just shows you how to get up and going with Next.js and various other packages to get a nice full stack development flow. And this setup actually uses login with Google OAuth, but I essentially took this app as a base and then added the email provider instead. And so if you take a look at Nextoff, they have a lot of different providers of various OAuth, but they also have the email provider. And this provider essentially allows you to do magic link login. That is, there's no password associated with the account. Whenever someone tries to log in, it sends them an email, they click on it, and then they are now logged in. And you can see here, there's a few different ways to integrate it. The first one is to use HTTP. So there's a lot of email provider APIs out there like SendGrid or Mailgun or AWS SES. And essentially what you can do is you can add the configuration here and then you add your own send verification request function. And then inside of there, you can hit whatever API you want. So in this example, they're calling the SendGrid API, but you can call any other API that would allow you to send emails. For my example, we used SMTP credentials. So pretty much any email provider that you sign up with, even if they have an API, they pretty much always make SMTP credentials available to you. And then you can use those credentials to send emails directly. So to get this running with NextAuth, you do need to install NodeMailer, which is essentially a Node.js package that can send emails over SMTP. And then from there, you can update your environment variables. So here you can see, I have a few different setup. I have my email from, so this will be who the email is coming from, the server host, when you're running in production, this will be like SendGrid or Mailgun or Resend or any of the other various uh, mail hosts. Then we set up our port here. We're using Mailhog, which runs on 1025 by default. So that's the port. And then with Mailhog, you can actually just pass in anything you want for the username and password because it's just running locally. And this Next.js starter project also have a way of working with environment variables in a type safe way. And here you can see I have all of those environment variables set up. And then whenever we set up our config, we can actually use those environment variables. So here you can see I'm bringing in that ENV and then right here under providers, I'm bringing in email provider, which just comes from NextAuth providers. You can see I pass in all of my various credentials. And so now NextAuth is ready to send emails. We just need an email server. So there's a couple of different ways to set up Mailhog. You can see in their docs, you can install it with Brew if you're on a Mac. They also have instructions for installing on Linux, or you could even install it as a Golang module. But my favorite way to do it is just to do it with Docker. So my Next.js starter project comes with a Docker Compose that spins up a Postgres database for you. So this is where all the data is stored, where all the users are stored. But because we already have this Docker Compose, we can just add a new section to spin up our Mailhog image. So you can see here, I just call it Mailhog. I specify the Mailhog image, which is hosted on Docker Hub. And then I specify my ports here. Now the default SMTP port is 1025. And then the default HTTP port, that is where you're gonna visit the dashboard to actually see your emails, that's 8025. You can see here, I'm also passing these in as environment variables because if for whatever reason, either of these two ports were taken up on your machine, you could put them on whatever ports you want. This is just essentially gonna map the port on your computer 
to the port running inside of the container. And so in your .env, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you have those two port variables set here. From there, just make sure that you have Docker running. Now I'm on a Mac, I have Docker desktop running, but there are alternatives as well. I actually made a video a while back on how to use Docker for developers. And I, I talked about a lot of the alternatives there. So definitely check that out if you don't wanna use Docker desktop. But with Docker desktop running, we can now run Docker compose up. It's gonna spin up our Postgres database, but as you can see, it also spins up Mailhog. And from there, we can actually visit it in the browser. And there we go, we have our Mailhog dashboard. From there, because our email provider that we set up here in NextAuth is pointed at our Mailhog server, all of our emails are gonna show up inside of the Mailhog dashboard. So now, if I try to sign in, that is gonna send the email, but it went through Mailhog, so Mailhog essentially just captures the email. It doesn't go anywhere after that. And if you head to the Mailhog dashboard, you can actually see the email. So here we can see who it got sent to. And then when I click sign in, that's gonna redirect me back to localhost. And I can now use the app as this user. So this is awesome. But one of the other cool things about this is Mailhog just traps every single email that gets sent to it. So you can set your email as anything you want. So let's actually just sign out and I'll try to log in as a different email. So I'll just do my personal email like this, but that also shows up in the inbox over here as well. So this is really great if you're doing like multi-user testing or maybe you're checking different types of roles, but now we can see there's the email to my personal account. I can log in and there we go. Now you might be wondering how we're able to actually see the user's avatar there because the default email integration sets the image to nothing. So we would have just seen like a fallback image, but I actually added a custom integration with the Gravatar API. So this API has been around for a long time. Essentially anybody that signs up on Gravatar with their email can set their preferred avatar, their preferred display name, and then any other service that uses the Gravatar API can actually pull that data in. And so I've set up Gravatar accounts for all of these emails that I've been logging in with. Let's actually try another one like that. And we'll go ahead and log in. There it is, sign in. And you can see it has my nice little coding carton image. But essentially each one of these accounts has signed up on Gravatar, filled out their profile. And so now they have a default avatar and then also in the profile, you'll see that they have their display name set as well. So to get this set up, there's a couple of different things you could do. So next off has callbacks that you can tap into. They also have events. And so here inside of events, you have access to sign in whenever a user signs in. I believe there's also create user and then also like link account. So you could tap into these various events, reach out to the Gravatar API and then update the user in the database but I wanted a more direct integration. Essentially, whenever the user gets created, I want that image and display name to be there automatically. So I created a custom database adapter. So here you can see I have my Drizzle email adapter, and essentially I just wrapped the Drizzle adapter and then overrode the create user method. So if we take a look at this file, I brought in the Drizzle adapter, and then I did some TypeScript foo here to get the correct types. But essentially, I wanna create my own function that behaves exactly as the Drizzle adapter. So I did that here. We have the database that gets passed in and potentially the schema, which is optional. Then inside this function, I create the real Drizzle adapter. So this is essentially what you would pass in if you were just gonna use this adapter directly. And then from there, I return all of the properties of the base adapter, but then just override any functions that I want to. And in this case, I wanna override the create user function. So this method gets called anytime a user is about to get put into the database. And what I do before putting them into the database is make a call out to the Gravatar API. So the way their API works is you take a SHA-256 hash of the email, and then you can make an API request with that hash. And if that user has filled out their Gravatar profile, you can get back their avatar URL and display name. And there's a few other properties you could get as well. So, and so essentially, if that user does exist on Gravatar, I set their image, I set their display name. And then if they don't, I just set some fallback information because even with the default adapter, the name actually just is null because it's not set to anything. So if they weren't found on Gravatar, I actually just take the part of their email before the at sign and set that as their name and then set their image to just a default avatar. So UI avatars is another service where you can essentially pass in a name. You can also customize like the colors and everything else. And this will just give you a default avatar. You've probably seen some of these before that just have like the capital letters that correspond to the user's name. So in this case, because we pass in their email name, it's going to pick the letters off of that and then have just a default image there. Now there are probably other APIs you could tap into. You could probably check like if it's a Gmail address, then maybe you make a request to a Google API to get their actual profile and then get their information that way. But this is just one way to basically customize the data before it gets put into the database. Now there's one more customization you can do here with NextAuth, which is to customize the email that actually gets sent to the user whenever they're logging in. And so here in the options that we pass to email provider, we can pass in send verification request and then write our custom code inside of here. 
if you take a look at the next auth documentation, they actually show you what the built-in function is doing. And essentially it's creating a transport with node mailer, which is that node package that allows us to send emails over SMTP, but they have some built-in functions called text and HTML, which essentially just style those emails. So if you implement this method yourself, you could create a completely custom email that maybe has your brand logo for a bit more customization. Also, you could actually customize the login flow, right? So by default, this just sends a link that the user needs to click on. But what if you wanted to implement like a one-time six-digit sign-in code instead of having the user click a link? You could implement that with this. So another method you can override is called generate verification token. And so inside of here, instead of generating a big long string like is the default with login with email, you could generate a random six-digit or six-character code. That code will then be accessible inside of here and then you could craft your email to show that code instead. Now from there, you'd actually need to build a custom page where the user enters in their sign-in code because that doesn't come built in with NextAuth. But NextAuth also has a REST API, so there's essentially endpoints you could hit if you wanted to pass in that custom verification token from your own UI. Now, another fun thing to pair this with would be React Email. So React Email essentially gives you components that you can use that are just JSX, they look like React, but they've been tested to render nicely across a lot of email clients. Because if you haven't worked with uh, creating emails from scratch with HTML, it's actually a pain to make sure they look good across all types of email clients and devices. And so there are packages like React Email, which gives you all kinds of cool components, like an image component and a button component. And they also have templates. So you can see here, they've recreated a lot of these transactional emails that you might have gotten from various services. But if you click on them, they actually show you the code you would need with React Email to generate the HTML that you could then send inside of an email. And so if you're gonna create custom emails, I highly recommend go with something like React Email. There's also MJML. There's probably a lot of others. If you know of any others, let us know down in the comments as well. So that's it for this video. All the code that I showed you today is gonna to be available on the email-login branch on that next starter template. Link is in the description. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. If you're gonna use Mailhog in your app, let me know. And if you have any other tips for other tools or various things for working with emails in React, I'd love to know that as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one.